In this video we're going to look at solving trigonometric equations when you have to make a trigonometric substitution and also solving trig equations with double angles. And so when we look at example 6 we see that this might be a trig equation in quadratic form or we may be able to get it to quadratic form but we've got two different trig functions so that won't work. That's the same as having two different variables when you factor. Because of the Pythagorean identities, we're allowed to make substitutions for sine squareds, cosine squareds, any of the trig functions squared. Since sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x, we can replace or make a substitution of 1 minus cosine squared x. Once we substitute the 1 minus cosine squared x, we'll need to distribute. After distributing, we'd like to get this in quadratic form so we can rearrange and also multiply both sides by negative 1 so that my leading term will be positive. So that will lead to the next equation. Now we can factor this. Again, you can use u substitution if it helps, but after factoring we get 2 cosine x plus 1 times cosine x minus 2 now we'll set each of these factors equal to zero. Now solve each of these equations. The first thing we notice, um, let's look at the right equation here. We've got cosine x equals two. We know the range for cosine, or all the output values for cosine, have to be within negative one to one. And so 2 is not in the range for cosine, so there's no solution to this equation right here. We'll just focus on s solutions that are generated when we solve cosine x equals negative 1, negative 1 half. We know cosine is negative in the second and the third quadrant. The, the reference angle or the first quadrant angle for which cosine is equal to 1 half is pi over 3. So we'll call this 3 pi over 3. So this would be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And you can check these on your calculator or check them by hand. At this point I'd like you to pause the video, try this next problem, make a trig substitution, and then start up the video again to check your work. All right, I'm going to start by making a trig substitution for cosine squared. Cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared, so I'll make the substitution. I'll distribute. I'll simplify and rearrange. And to make it easier to factor, I'll multiply both sides by negative 1. Basically just changing the sign of every term. The next step is to factor and then we'll solve. Factoring the trinomial gives us 2 sine x minus 1 times sine x minus 1. And we'll set each of these equal to 0 giving us sine x equal to 1 half and sine x equals 1. For sine x equal to a half, we're in the first and second quadrant. So we've done this before, we've seen this, it's pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. For the sine x is equal to 1, si that ordered pair on the unit circle would happen right here. That would be 0, 1 on your unit circle and so that would be pi over 2. So these are our three solutions. Again you can check these by plugging them in your calculator and seeing that you get 0. We're next going to look at solving trigonometric equations with a multiple angle, in this case a double angle. And so the first thing we want to do is make a substitution. We want to solve this as if it were a single angle first. We'll let theta represent 2x. And now we'll solve the tangent of theta equals negative square root of 3. 
tangent is negative in the second and fourth quadrants, and the reference angle of the first quadrant angle whose tangent is the square root of 3 is pi over 3. That would be your reference angle. So this would be 2 pi over 3, and this would be 5 pi over 3. Remember, if you label your axes with the equivalent of pi and 2 pi, that will help you get those. This is the solution to this equation. And what I know is that I really just need, I'm going to start with the general solution. Uh, I know that these solutions are happening every pi. From 2 pi to 5 pi over 3, I'd get another one. But this is the tangent of theta, not the tangent of 2 theta. So I first start by writing the general solution for theta. So, so theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus pi k. We don't need two separate general solutions because this is tangent and the, the period for tangent is pi will generate a solution every pi radians. But we just solved for theta and what we really want to solve for is 2x. So 2x will equal 2 pi over 3 plus pi k, to pi, excuse me, pi k, and then we'll divide each side by 2, which is the same as multiplying by a half. So we end up with get x equals pi over 3, because 2 pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 3, plus pi over 2k. But I don't want the general solution for this problem. I want all solutions between 0 and 2 pi, including 0. And so what I'll start to do now is to generate solutions by letting k take on different values. When k equals 0, x equals pi over 3 plus pi over 2 times 0, which is just pi over 3. Letting k equal 1, I get pi over 3 plus pi over 2 times 1. Getting a common denominator, I'm going to get 2 pi plus 3 pi over 6, which would be 5 pi over 6. I'm still within my range of values from 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to let k equal 2, which would be 4 pi over 3. So, so far we've generated, using this formula, three solutions that are within the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Let's try k equals 3 we'd get pi over 3 plus pi over 2 times 3, or 3 pi over 2, giving us 11 pi over 6, which is still within 0 to 2 pi, because 12 pi over 6 would be 2 pi. We run into trouble when we let k, and I'll write this down here for a second, when we let k equal 4, because that would give us pi over 3, plus pi over 2 times 4. But when you take pi over 2 times 4, you get 2 pi. And 2 pi plus pi over 3 has to be greater than uh, the 2 pi in our range. So we won't get a solution from this. So we end up with the solutions of pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, 4 pi over 3, and 11 pi over 6. Those are all the solutions to this formula, uh, to this equation. All right, at this point, I'd like you to pause the video. Also remembering that you can check your solutions using your calculator as well. Um, but at this point, pause the video and try practice problem 7 and start the video up again to check your work. All right, starting off by letting uh, 2x be represented by theta. Cosine of theta equals the square root of 2 over 2. I know that cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrants, and the first quadrant angle for theta would be pi over 4. This would be 8 pi over 4, representing 2 pi. So my other angle would be 7 pi over 4. And I'm going to write the general solution. Now in this case, since it is cosine and the period is 2 pi, we are going to come up with two separate general solutions, unlike when we had the tangent. 
We'll have theta equals pi over 4 plus 2 pi k, remembering that k is an integer, and then we'll replace theta with 2x, so 2x equals pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. Dividing both sides by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by a half. We get pi equals pi over 8 plus pi k, and we'll start generating solutions, letting k equal 0, and working our way up until we are out of the interval. So when k equals 0, we get pi over 8 plus pi times 0, and that just gives us the pi over 8. When k equals 1, we get pi over 8 plus pi, and pi would be 8 pi over 8, so we would get 9 pi over 8, All right, still less than 2 pi. When I let k equal 2 in this case, I get pi over 8 plus 2 pi. And if I add pi over 8 to 2 pi, I'm going to be larger than 2 pi, so we're not going to count this one. So from the first general solution, we get two solutions. And now let's look at the second general solution. We have theta equals 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k, or 2x is equal to 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. We want to divide each side by 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by a half. We get 7 pi over 8 plus pi k, and we'll start generating our solutions. Again, in this case, we already know that 2 is not going to work, because if k equals 2, you'll get 2 pi plus 7 pi over 8, which is going to be too big. So we know we're just going to try k equals 0 and k equals 1. So letting k equal 0, we get 7 pi over 8 plus pi times 0, which is just 0. So we'd have 7 pi over 8. Letting k equal 1, we have 7 pi over 8 plus pi times 1, which would be pi. So 8 pi over 8 plus 7 pi over 8 is 15 pi over 8. And these are our other two solutions that we generated. All of these solutions are within the interval of 0 to 2 pi. So we get four solutions to this equation, each of which you could check by substituting either by hand or in your calculator. Remember, most tests have a calculator part and a non-calculator part, and so you should be able to check these both ways.